welcome to Let's Get Serious with Erin Michaels, where I will be your host. This is the podcast where we discuss issues from a queer youth perspective. So listen up, bring an open mind, and let's get serious. Hey there, welcome to Let's Get Serious with Erin Michaels, where I will be your host. This is the podcast where we discuss issues from a queer youth perspective. So listen up, bring an open mind, and let's get serious. Today's guest is State Representative Leslie Herod, pronouns she, her. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Leslie Herod is a member of the Colorado House of Representatives, a member of the Democratic Party. She represents the 8th District. She is the first gay African American to be elected to Colorado's state legislature. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much for having me. I Absolutely. love sitting with you. How are you? I am doing good. I should add one caveat. I'm the first out black wow. queer elected official okay. in yes. the state of Colorado. But as I've been doing what I've been doing, uh, I have heard more recently that one of my former black colleagues, who I didn't know but served way long before me and is no longer with us, was actually queer as well, but couldn't be oh out in gosh. the building. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You learn something new every day, I, huh? And I'm sure there are more, <laughs> yes. right? Because yeah, if you think about mm -hmm. going back to the state's founding, we actually had some members that were part of the legislature when we were the Colorado Territory, and there were some black men up there, and hmm, I got to learn more about them and see what I yeah. think. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your story and like how you got into politics? Yeah, well, I'm a military brat, so I was born mm. in Germany. Okay. My mom served in the U.S. Armed Forces uh, as an OBGYN, and so oh. she got her start and her education through the military. She's from California, Oakland, um, but we moved to Colorado, and my mom retired here in Colorado. Oh, okay. And so I'm a Colorado gal with a little bit of <laughs> California. My dad was from the South, so you throw in a little bit of Louisiana. Dang, that's like the mix there, huh? Uh, born in Germany, so who knows what's <laughs> okay, happening. Okay. Uh, the only thing I'm super sure about is that I'm a Virgo, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I've always been interested in how – to grow community. I think public service has been in my vein since my family served in the military, but that wasn't quite for me, you know? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so uh, I went to CU Boulder for college, got involved in student government, didn't realize we were the largest student government in the nation. Um, by the time I was 20, I was a president right. and I had about a $26 million budget uh, and got to run campus and pass bills. Um, I'm around LGBTQ equality before, like that was a thing, and was just excited to be there. From there, I just got involved in Colorado that State politics, ran for office, and amazing. here we are. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That, that, that is so great to hear. Um, I know, like, being, especially in America, and, you know, being black and queer, it's not easy for us to get to the places we are. Yeah. So, like, what are some struggles you've experienced, like, with being queer and, you know, getting to where you are? Yeah, well, I think, you know, for, first I'll start with my privilege, which is that I am cis, you know, mm -hmm. and I present as femme, and a lot of folks don't think about that as queer, especially not when I was getting started, mm -hmm. you know? So... Part of that, though, came in me having to come out all the right. time. Mm, all the I time. I know. I, me too. <laughs> me too. Every time. It's like, oh, I'm gay. <laughs> right. Like, oh, you know, where's your husband? Mm -hmm. You know, in, uh, in politics, where's your husband and your two kids? And I'm like, you know, I mm -hmm. have a dog and maybe sometimes a girlfriend. It's like, it's yeah. like, you know. <laughs> um, and so I think that that has been interesting. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think a lot of the struggles have come in more recently when – I feel like we're not making as much progress as we should be. And so yeah. when I first got into politics and first got elected, there was a lot of momentum around LGBTQ equality, mm -hmm. um, around uh, dismantling racism. Uh, and I feel like we've kind of gone a bit backwards. People are tired of talking about race. People are being even more transphobic, especially around our trans right. youth in schools. Exactly. Oh my and God. it's been acceptable. And so this has been... That has been, I think, the biggest challenge is, is the, the kind of backsliding from all the work that we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, um, next to someone who we recently lost, I just want to mm -hmm. acknowledge them. They were beaten up in the school bathroom, which was horrible. Horrific. Horrible. It yeah. was horrific. And what bamboozles me is that a lot of people think just because we have social media, the world has gotten better. Right. 
like people can get canceled now for the things that they're saying. Right. But kind of. Yeah, kind of. Canceled in one place and like embraced somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I'm just like, the world has not gotten better. It's, right. It's still the same as the 60s. It's or just, more toxic. Right, more toxic. We've just, you know, got more exposed to it. Mm-hmm. So now we see more of it going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just don't like when people try to act like, you know, like, oh, it's 2024. It's great. Yeah. I mean, listen, Next was actually uh, misgendered on the House floor intentionally oh, uh, last wow. week. Wow. Right after their murder. Really? And the victim shaming around it also happened, saying that Next was the bully. And, you know, I'm always the one to step in when that stuff happens and Mm -hmm. say and call it out. But why should we have to? The fact that grown adults think that it's okay to bully, dead name, shame, victim Mm -hmm. blame youth, trans youth. It's it's absurd to me. Mm -hmm. And, And quite frankly, I believe that the toxicity has found a home in places like X, right, or Mm -hmm. Twitter. And so they get they get um, put on this pedestal. Exactly. Because they are such villains Mm -hmm. and that is highlighted. And while, you know, they might be shunned in other places, they are lifted up in a place where they find their home. And that's really, I think, that's really detrimental uh, and toxic for society, you know? It is. Because quite frankly, in the past, people had to keep that stuff in the shadows. You don't mm-hmm. bully kids. You don't say the N-word. You don't do right. these things, not out loud, but now they're finding their space. And it's become mm-hmm. a, a, a opportunity for people to be uh, bold on social media, but now also bold in real life. Exactly. You, you, you think that people have like learned to bring it back or keep what they have to themselves, mm-hmm. but... People are just more vocal now. It's mm-hmm. like you know, the good side, bad side. It's just like every both sides are vocal. Yeah. So no one yeah. is like really quieted down. So. I think the good people are quieter though. True. What do you think about that? Um, I kind of do too. It's like it's rare when I find like the good people. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, you're on my side. But yeah. then there's like mostly the negative people. And I open the comment section. I'm like, you're all ignorant. They're just so loud. Right? I know. Like the bad mm-hmm. people are so loud. The good folks are like, I'm going to go somewhere else. Like, and mm. they don't necessarily say anything because I think they're sick of it. But then exactly. also, does that make people who are being attacked alone? You know? Mm. Um, and so it's really interesting to see and to watch um, and then also to engage and say, you know, it's not okay. But I do fully believe in my heart that there are more good people than bad. The bad mm-hmm. are just loud right now. Yeah. And the too. good need to understand the space for them to be supporters, right? And to be allies and champions and to step up and feel safe doing that. And mm-hmm. that's that's tough right now. It is very tough. Very tough. Um, and a little change of topic. Uh, one thing I do want to do with this podcast is open up different backgrounds when it comes to beliefs in spirituality. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to share that I am a Christian Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of stereotypes that come within that. And I know the reactions I can get when I say that. Yeah. And I think people should realize that we're not all the same. Yeah. And, um, I just wanted to ask, like, if you believe in anything spiritually. Yeah. But um, it, it's just really to get everyone's background, you know, because mm-hmm. as much as I could talk about what I believe in everything, I love learning about what everyone else sees and their point of view on those things. Yeah, well, I'm Christian as well. Uh, oh. And so I um, actually found my my home in, in Christian faith when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom didn't kind of push any type of spirituality on me, though she's Christian as well. Mm-hmm. Um, she allowed me to find my own spirituality and I found my home in Christianity. I'm Episcopalian. Uh, I go to the cathedral and my pastor is a black queer man. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Nev- wow. Yeah. And so right down down in uh, the heart of Denver, okay. um, the Episcopal pastor is, is queer and black. And so that's always good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not what I was necessarily looking for, but did not I felt amazing to see it like in <laughs> yeah. real life. Like what? Mm-hmm. And younger than me. What are you talking about? Uh, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, but I also do a lot of um, practices that are more African in nature or more grounding. And so I meditate, you know, Mm. I, um, you know, I, I also like to learn and experience other religions as well. Anything from Buddhism to, uh, to, to Wiccan and witchcraft and just kind of really thinking through what the real meaning behind some of those spiritual practices are. Right. Cause mm-hmm. witchcraft was used to vilify 
predominantly white women, you mm-hmm. know, and make them seem to be something they weren't when really it was about uh, building community amongst women, mm. you know? We've heard the conversations about, you know, maybe Beyonce doing a yes, little bit of, little bit of uh, spirituality stuff and, and, and how that has centered her life. And I think that's great. And so really finding ways to have my faith, but then also think through exactly. how I can use my um, uh, use other spiritual practices as a part of my resiliency, mm-hmm. uh, I think has been really expansive for me. I, I, I love to hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I'm my my whole family is Christian and I'm really grateful that not only have I had a family to love and accept me for who I am and yeah. push me and support me, but to also let me have my own path. Absolutely. With spirituality. And unfortunately not all kids get to say that, especially queer kids. It's always like a horrific story. Like they're pushed away because they're Christian and they believe that they're an abomination. Yeah. Have you watched the show Sex Education? No, I have not. Okay. You've got to watch it. Okay. Um, It is so good. And there is a black queer character. And if you get into the seasons more than just the the first season, they start to talk about his storyline a lot. And it is so interesting how complex they talked about his faith as an African and it's set in, I think England. Right. And so, um, in the church Mm. and then coming out in church and how easy and not easy it was for him and the journey he's going through with that, you know, it's, it's really interesting. And how amazing is it to see black queer stories on TV and the storyline, not just be, um, this whole victim situation, you know, but really just like we are complex people. Right. We are dynamic people. That There's part, not one storyline for us. But wow, when we see us represented in these mainstream shows, it's pretty. Put that put on a shirt. <laughs> We're complex people. <laughs> yes, please. Complex people. Um, so check it out. Let me know what you think. I mean, I, they don't I would pay love me. To check that out. They don't pay me. So like, <laughs> <laughs> but it would be good to know. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad that I'm able to freely explore, you know, my own relationship with God and, yeah. you know, find my connection through there. Yeah. It's yeah. it is something mm-hmm. that I think is it's so it is I keep saying grounding, but it is really grounding. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if we're not tethered to something on this in this world, then mm-hmm. we float away. And I do want to get it to a point where when I mention those things like in a lot of queer spaces that it's not looked like frowned upon. Yeah. You know, because like and when people don't be. talk about like some like when I go into Christian spaces, they think I'm not holy enough. But mm-hmm. then like when I go to a queer space, they're like, oh, you're too holy. Like you're too yeah. into that. Same with blackness. Mm-hmm. You know, same with blackness. <laughs> it is all yeah, under the same book. Under yeah. the same book. It's like why again, like we are we are not a monolith people, you know. And so let us be who we are in that diverse way. And so imagine me growing up um, sometimes from California, sometimes Colorado, sometimes mm-hmm. Germany, going to the south. You know, people didn't know what to make of me, you know, Uh, and sometimes I didn't know what to make of myself. That's okay too, Mm -hmm. you know, but what I learned is like that I am dynamic and that's cool, you know, and everyone is. And so, um, you know, I lean into that now. And uh, I do agree with that entirely that we are all dynamic. I still season my food though. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I love that. Um, (laughs) We, we are all uh, unique in our own ways, and I love that some of us embrace it, but unfortunately, some of us don't, and there are some people who judge other people mm-hmm. for, you know, seeing how they embrace themselves and be unique in their own way, yeah. and um, especially right. us as queer people, we get a lot of hate and neglect for the way we are because they see that we're able to be ourselves freely yeah. and openly. And I want, I just want to ask, like, how can we make people listen to us more? You know, especially like, for me as queer youth and kids, like, how can we get adults to, like, you know, learn how to and just let us, you know, be? I mean, it's an age old question. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's what I fought for when I was a student activist, you know? Th- yeah. And it's still happening today. And sometimes as an adult now, weird, uh, I have to say, <laughs> step back and say, let me listen. Uh-huh. You know, what are the young people, what are the young people asking for? And let me do that. Not just exactly. listen, but act on it, you know, together. Right. Um, and so I think that first it is finding that assurity within yourself to be able to assert yourself into the conversations in a way that not only are you asking people to listen to you, but you're hearing what they're saying too, Mm -hmm. right? Because the conversation has to be 
uh, two ways, you know, or always, if you will, depending on who you're talking mm. to, um, because that's really how you dialogue. Right. And so if you're always saying, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, it's not going to work. Same with politics. Right. If I just yell at people and say, this is the right thing to do. Listen, listen, listen. People stop listening. Exactly. Period. You know, and so being able to have that dialogue, I think, is really key. Um, but also being firm in who you are. And listen, this is who I am. Um I'm not going to have you question me, but what I am going to ask for you to do is understand how you can support people who are like me. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like ties me back into the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and like how we just as black people got our, you know, point in America and like just live. Yeah. We started just doing normal daily lives that, you know, white people were doing like sitting in the front of the bus or yeah. you know using the bathrooms we wanted to instead of us asking at some point we just started doing yeah. and at some point they had no choice but to just let us have those rights right because no matter what they did to us we were just gonna keep doing it and i think i guess we just have to live you know unintentionally and just let us be ourselves and mm -hmm. even if they don't want us to do it we have to just live yeah unapologetically mm -hmm. and i think that the key there is like but it did take it did take organization, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't just people who decided I'm gonna sit on the bus for fun, right? right? Like, right. or because I'm tired. Like that's the line that people say now. But really, it was organized, right? Mm -hmm. And people had to agree who was gonna be the first one to sit down. And some stories got erased in that in the civil rights movement. You know, Bayard Rustin is one, but there are so many others. Rosa Parks wasn't the first person to sit down and say I'm sitting at the front of the bus, mm -hmm. but she had the best storyline. That right. folks felt comfortable with, you know, right? Um, and so I think that we have to also understand those dynamics that there is a lot of intentionality around movements, mm -hmm. you know, and how can you organize not just yourself but others to be able to to work with you, right? To work together to make these changes happen. I think it's interesting that we're seeing a lot more you know, queer young people coming out because it does feel safer in a lot of ways than it used to. But then when when you're out, what are you asking for? You know, and how are mm -hmm. you asking for that support together? Um, and you can't do it alone. And I think what we're seeing now is folks not trying to do it alone, but saying that I'm not I'm not the only one. There's mm -hmm. a lot of folks here, like you've seen. I mean, you guys are doing this together, you know, drag you taunt. You guys are doing the things yeah. together. And that's really important to find that home, but then also to take action if that's what you want to do to make your community better for everybody exactly what i notice about this generation especially like me and other young people we are definitely like more bold yeah and i think the older generation is having a hard time get used to that yeah is this because we have a platform yeah to be vocal like we're not taking adults bull crap we're yeah. like this is who we are you're not going to change us we're not going anywhere. And I'm not going to wait until I'm grown yeah. to be who I want to be. This is who I am now. Right. I love so it. So I, I think adults are, like, really finding a hard time accepting that. I think that's where, like, most of the hate comes from. It's mm -hmm. just like, oh, I didn't have that space when I was younger. But mm -hmm. you have that space. So then now their instinct is to be like, okay, I'm taking away your rights, you know, because you're a kid. You can't do that. You can't do this. Yeah. It's just like, that's not how It's like how the we pay work. your dues mentality, you mm -hmm. know. It's like, oh, you haven't paid your dues. And it's like, well... Do we really have to think that way anymore, you know, right. or can we all exist in the space and be as empowered as as each other? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mo most definitely. And that's just like one of the things of me being a queer youth is not feeling like adults are listening. And at this point, I know like we're just being ignored mm -hmm. at this point. Like I mm -hmm. can tell just like when they ignore us and just like whatever, we're just going to do what we do um well some of us hear you yeah yeah some of us leslie Heron hears us <laughs> y'all <laughs> we're heard by leslie Heron. Absolutely. but um yeah i i definitely been you know trying to find more space to be myself and learning if i don't have a space create my own space yeah which is like what i did here i'm like if i'm not getting a platform to you know say what i need to say then i'm gonna say what i need to say right here yeah. you know if i if no one wants me as a queer youth drag uh, entertainer to perform then i'll make my own space with the all ages drag brunch and yeah. you know like do all those things yeah and I, I also think though don't completely go away from those spaces where you might not feel welcomed mm -hmm. you know exactly and that's hard that's why again you need support because everyone's role is a bit different. You know, I continue to show up in a lot of these spaces that said I was too young or don't talk about being queer or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm still going to go, but I'm not going to spend all my time there, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to fight all the fights because I don't have the 
wherewithal or the need or desire to do that all the time. I need to take care of my mental health as well. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? But you're not going to forget about me either. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Like we're going to be in those spaces. And so uh, there was a point in my life and I still do it where I intentionally put my, myself in all white spaces or I intentionally put myself in spaces that don't have a lot of queer representation. Mm -hmm. And then I will be as bold as I need to be to there. make people make sure they know mm -hmm. that I'm here for a reason. Right. And like that we are here. Like, you know, if you exactly. try to like hide yourself, no one knows you're there. Exactly. So just by putting yourself in that space, it's like, as long as you're here, yeah. I'm going to be here and too. And infiltrate so. a little bit and be like, uh -huh. I'm bringing a few more people with me. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know what more, I mean? More like, people with me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I do the uh, drag brunch monthly every first Sunday yeah. with Chloe Katz. Uh, and uh, lately there have been some protesters. I show up to the brunch. Yeah. So they're not um, they're not doing anything dangerous like to put us in danger. Mm. But like they'll show up like when I walk in, they'll be like, oh, you're a sex clown or, you know, they made a whole video about us on Twitter. They sn snuck into the brunch, like just to act like a guest mm. and recorded and they put a video of us on Twitter. It's gays against groomers. Oh, they're, they, they also they like They want to act like I don't know them. I see you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they also love to tweet about me too. Yeah. Oh I don't know gosh. if you've noticed. No. He's been coming to the Capitol a lot mm -hmm. uh, and they're pretty upset because I think I make a lot of sense, you know? So <laughs> they're like, whoa, like let's not have You're anyone down there sense. like uh, with common sense mm -hmm. and everything. And um, they are, I do, think that they are a dangerous group in that um, they have been really used by the far right mm -hmm. as in look I have gay friends and these gay friends think that you know right. X mm -hmm. Y or Z I will say though one of their leaders it's kind of funny I shouldn't say this but <laughs> yeah, I know you're listening it's all free I know you're listening it's Mr. was it Guggenheim I don't even know how to say <laughs> your last name but you, your, your emails are there but uh, anyways um, and I, I've recently heard that they, and I don't know, maybe someone had something to do with it. I don't know. But uh, I've been kicked out of the gay bars recently in Denver because uh -oh. of their harassment of a lot of queer elected officials, a lot of young people. And it's like, sorry, I don't know where you're going to get your fun times, but it ain't going to be it ain't going to be in our community like that, yeah. you know, because you can't vilify us and then right. think you're going to party you're, with you're, us. You're like, what are you like, doing? You're all shady and stuff. Right. Like, like, oh, wait, no, I'm gay. Like, the uh, no. self-loathing is I too know. much for you to be like all up in our business and space. Mm -hmm. And so... I know. I, yeah, and I find it how those kind of people like to call the people around us groomers and the yeah. adults and stuff. I'm yeah. like, first of all, if the first thing you see when you look at a child is sex, you, you, I'm not sure I'm the problem. I'm not sure my mother's the problem. You're the problem. Yeah. Like, what is going on? There's something you in your to, head. Yeah, you need to get your help. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you need to stay away, right? Uh -huh. why, are, why are these people so obsessed? That's so obsessed. why I'm asking. I'm like, what? What are you like obsessed about me about? Yeah. Like, are you jealous that you couldn't do this when you're younger? Correct. Or like, is there something else going on? Exactly, because uh, in, in the in the Twitter video that they put out about us, they were also saying like how there's a whole bunch of groomers in that area. They're like, uh, we found a whole bunch of people who have, you know registered sex offenders who are in the area. I'm like, well, that's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you go in the area, it's in Denver. It's in Denver. Right. Everywhere you go, that's just a thing. So, like when they try to act like you know where we're doing it, it's so dangerous, and they're like trying to hurt us and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's really funny to me. And don't do forget that. that, especially black queer folks, um, as of even I mean twenty thirty years ago, growing up, and now who are adults, obviously in our in our world, um, we're also racially profiled and targeted. Uh, and it was illegal for them to have sex with men, right? And so mm -hmm. they were arrested for being gay. And so now they're considered sex offenders when the only offense they had was something that's totally legal now, but it was also just being themselves. You know, I think about a bill that we passed recently called Tiara's Law that says if you have a felony on your record, um, you can still apply for a name change to fit your gender uh, oh. identity, you know? And that's something that had been banned in the past, and we're looking to change that because, you know, you can change, I can change my last name right now if I decide to marry somebody, exactly. you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not that hard. People do it all the time. But specifically in this population, it is much difficult, more, more difficult. Um, and, you know, Tiara, it's black, queer, was arrested for sex work in Florida, um, um, consensual sex work in Florida. And it was a misdemeanor offense. But because Florida has these laws, if you have more than one, you, aut you automatically become a felon. Mm -hmm. And so has a felony offense has been this was, I don't know. 20, 30 years ago, now living as Tiara, has been for forever and wants to change mm -hmm. their name uh, and very much um, vilified for that. And 
everything now would have mostly been legal, you know, and definitely wouldn't be, be any type of felony offense, but can't get their name changed and has to out themselves and use their dead name every time they try to get a job, every time they're applying for housing. Uh, and it, it's just ridiculous. not okay. It's things that we can change, you know, uh, and Gays Against Rumors was really upset about that. And it's like, why? 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 You mm-hmm. know, um, why does it matter to you if Tiara gets to go by Tiara? Yeah, it, you know, that's what I find funny is because really those people in power or, you know, the people they work for, they are very pick and choose. And that's yeah. what I've learned about the media now. It's very pick and choose on what you want to hit on based mm-hmm. on your own personal preference. Yeah. And that's the thing. I'm like, if you don't think kids should do drag, don't take your kids there. Yeah, right. Like, right. Don't take them there. Right. You know, like my my mom doesn't agree with, you know, people learning how to shoot at a young age. So you don't gun. go to a range. Yeah, so don't go to a range. <laughs> like, that's what I understand. Like, if you don't agree with certain things as a parent, that's okay. Because not all parents are going to agree on the same thing on what to do with their children. Yeah, so we have another bill that we're, we're it's working through the legislature at the same time. And basically what that's doing is saying that in schools, um, you cannot dead name a, a young person. Um, in fact, that in, in our schools, that it would be considered discrimination mm-hmm. if you uh, call a student by a name that they don't identify with, that they no longer identify with. So obviously, it's it's to support our trans youth who have changed their names, um, but maybe haven't done it at home, mm-hmm. but have at school, uh, so that they're not targeted like Next was, like so many others mm-hmm. were, and, and the school be a part of that bullying. And I, when I tell you how mad these people were about this bill, and it's like, listen, nothing in this bill is making your kid gay or queer. It's nothing not. in this bill is making your kid not come out to you. You know, it's just like it's absurd. But what it is doing is making people feel like they can be safe at school. And I don't know when we decided that was a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And it, I do homeschool, mm-hmm. and um, that's because before. In public school, uh, throughout my whole elementary life, I was physically bullied and stuff. And this was before I came out. So this was just me being a black student Mm -hmm. in an all-white school. So I could only imagine me being queer Mm -hmm. on top of that and going to a school. And it makes us scared. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't don't think adults realize when they're blocking all these things in the school and when they're making us seem more like a creature instead of a human or like any other kid. Yeah. It's we're more likely to die not only are you more likely to die you're more likely to also be put in jail if uh you fight back or if you stand Mm -hmm. up for yourself i mean it's so many different things and more likely to unfortunately die by suicide Mm -hmm. self-harm go into to drug use so many things like i always like we always have to think about like who's next who's next like am i next like it like it it's not something any child should have to think about and we can support each other instead Mm -hmm. it's it's really simple. The solution yeah. is simple, but it, everyone makes it a lot more complicated. Um, so I just want to, I like getting people's point of views on everything. Sure. Because everybody's perspective matters. Mm-hmm. How do you see the world right now? Mm. Um, hmm. Well, we talked a little bit about about it. You know, I do think that things are going a bit backwards, and mm-hmm. I think we need to be more supportive of each other so that we can provide the community we need to get the job done and specifically um you know fight against discrimination fight against transphobia and racism and say that you know we all need to be respected and lifted up in our society uh, we're deteriorating in my opinion uh, mm. and when you have folks like trump being elected again and again you know it, it's just it's disheartening it but it's also what dangerous the, what's in this country it does it shows what's in this country and uh, I think we're we're we are walking into pretty dark times, and mm-hmm. there is an opportunity though for us to turn it around. And so that optimism, I think, is what helps us get through it. Yeah, my next question was going to be like, do you believe things that are happening right now can change? Because especially for me, like when I look at the world and all the things that are going on and people being elected, I lose hope sometimes. Yeah, and I see like all laws that change and what they teach in schools and just how people are working things now sometimes i lose hope but i'm just like is it gonna work out like i'm afraid like if i'm gonna be an adult will i have the same freedom yeah because of the people that are getting elected I'm yeah like, are they gonna find some sneaky way to take away my rights all Maybe. Of a sudden i look They're gonna up try. right and i look They're up and try. i'm just like what happened to what i had you know yeah, yeah. so like do you, do you believe that there's really like a way like 
we can change. Yeah, I mean, listen, as an elected official, these conversations are really hard, and I think they've mm-hmm. gotten more hateful. But at the end of the day, we are still winning here in Colorado. Um, we mm-hmm. will still get these bills passed. We will still continue to do more to support um, each other and our communities. And so I think that that is important to note. Um, it feels hard, right? And it is hard, but there is hope. And you can't lose sight of that hope. You know, if you lose sight of that hope, then I think, what do you what do you got? You know, exactly. you have to be able to see the optimism. You have to be able to see uh, how far we've come and what we should be grateful for in order to pre- prepare us like armor for the fight that we are going into you know we have all of these like if you think about it you know you go into battle you have to get the body armor you have to get the swords you have to get the shields right and I feel like um the hope is part of that shield right it's what kind of kind of helps bounce off some of that hate and reminds us where we're going Mm -hmm. We, we we definitely um I I do I'm still learning how to put my shield up when needed because um one term that goes around, especially with people like me, is like, you're so strong. Yeah. And I think it's just like, but I don't really want to be. It's right. Just like, oh, gosh, black people like, and I this know. Like, strength thing. It's you like, are so strong. <laughs> I'm just like. I am surviving I, like I you. I don't want to be. <laughs> like, I have to I have to be because mm-hmm. this is, you know. Because it'll eat you away. It, it'll eat you away. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but so will being overly strong and not taking care of yourself mm-hmm. or saying when you need help, right? Exactly. And that's hard to do, especially when you're supposed to be that strong person or you're supposed to be the optimistic person or you're the person that overcomes everything. But we got to teach people that black folks need help too. We do. And support. We do. We, we all deal with hate and feedback in a different way, whether we choose yeah. to be sensitive or strong. And I just want to ask, like, how do you deal with hate? Like when it's directed towards you, like how do you move on from that? I think about fighting for you, you know, I think about, you know, if I'm going to take this on, that's fine because it means they're not attacking everyone else, you know, Um, they're not attacking young people. You know, I I think I wrote that on the libs of TikTok. If you're Mm -hmm. coming for me, it means you're not targeting some young person today. You know, Um, I think that for me, it is about always making sure to reground, you know, when you feel like you need that grounding. So whatever spiritual practice it is, um, leaning into that, leaning into your community, your friendships. Um, And then also, I think, stepping up. For me, it's being bold and saying, it's not okay, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna gonna call it out every time I see it. It's exhausting, you know? And there are times when I'm like, you know what? I'll tell you a story. So recently on the floor, I had someone who I work well with, a Republican that I work well with, uh, and we were talking about something on the floor, and and, uh, he said to me privately, you know, we were still at work on the floor of the state capitol, but we had stepped away from the mic, and he said, every time you say something about being black, it's like uh, F you to white people. Mm. And I said, excuse me? I that said, first is... of all, if I wanted to say F you, I'd say F you <laughs> yeah, and F you. We're pretty bold here. But, like, <laughs> but that's not okay. And I'm not in the space right now where I feel like I need to teach you why. But why don't you Google it and call me tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And we can say that too. We can say, like, I am not going to teach you right now. I'm going to call it out. But I don't need to teach you anything. It's not my job, you know. And I don't feel mm-hmm. like it. I don't feel like it. I tell you what, though, he did come up to me the next day and apologize and say that he understood why what he said was completely wrong. Um, And he told me why it was wrong. And uh, I appreciated that. And we moved on. You know, sometimes you have those conversations where you can help teach someone and they can grow in that moment. And sometimes you can't. And you got to decide when you're going to engage and how you're going to engage. That's the problem. Like when we're just sharing our own experience and trying to fight for us just to live a normal life. Yeah other people can look at that and not realize it's just us being vulnerable they take it as we're attacking them it's a threat to them right and i was like wow i mean again and i'm i guess good for him for saying it out loud but also Mm -hmm. i appreciate that he grew there's so many folks that don't you know um but he did and Mm -hmm. that's and that that that's a win for the week yeah definitely um I, i i wish like people were just like more understanding on those things and weren't yeah. like oh my gosh like you just <laughs> want to attack me and ruin my whole life i'm like right. no i'm just telling you this is my life right and i want to live the way i want to right right mm-hmm. exactly um i haven't always been this confident mm. um really i'm just now like getting bold and more confident and just hearing myself and getting used to hearing my own voice because mm. i used to hate the way i sounded 
Oh, I'm I still, still like I'm still getting over that. Yeah. But um because of the bullying I went through, I went through this like really quiet phase where I'm just like I don't talk unless you need me to talk. Like mm. and, and that was for a while. It wasn't until I started doing uh drag and getting around my own community like they're like no, you need to speak up. Like if this is what you're going through, say what you feel. And I wasn't used to that cuz yeah. I was always being used to like being shut up. Yeah. Or like, you know, someone lying about something that I did and, you know, I, it, it made me pull back. And be yeah. Like, okay, maybe I shouldn't say anything. You know, there's no material you can work with if I'm not talking. Mm-hmm. But now I'm learning to be like, nope, if if I find a problem in something, I'm going to call it out. That's amazing. You found your voice at a pretty young age. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that that is, there's still people who are my age that haven't found their voice or don't feel like their voice matters. Um, and I think that's important. You know, again, everyone's different. It's okay to be mm-hmm. shy. It's okay to be introverted. You don't always have to be that one out there, you know. Um, but to know who you are and, and, and think that that matters enough to share that with people as openly as you choose to be is growth and it's beautiful to see. And so I'm glad that you're feeling more like there's a space for you to do that and to right. be that and to explore that and to make mistakes and grow mm-hmm. and speak. It's, it's amazing. And that's the problem. A lot of enough people don't allow yeah. their seasons just to yep. happen. Yep. Um, they think they have to put on this certain persona and cover who they are. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have to do that. And, I know that it's rare, especially like for a kid like me to have the voice that I have. So what would you say to queer youth who are struggling to find their own voice? Like what would you tell them to help them? Too many people fought and died for us to be in the same place that they were when they started the work, Mm. you know? And so for me, it's about, you know, understanding that where we come from, understanding our history, and then saying like, like that person struggled so I didn't have to, I owe it to them to fight. I owe it to them to be bold. I owe it to them to be here, Mm -hmm. to be here, you know? Uh, And so do that. But also know that a part of growth is being able to be who you are at the moment. If if that's a young person, that's a child, be be a child too. Have fun, play, you know? Um, Tell people how you're really feeling, you know? Experience everything Mm -hmm. and experience it as fully as you possibly can. That's that's the beauty of, of, of growing up. You know, don't don't do it too fast. A, a lot of adults, they view that as being rebellious, like in a way, like when they yeah. see that we're more confident or like yeah. that we're trying to find our voice. They, again, take that as a threat. And then they're like, oh, like you guys are like so loud now and you're like rude and disrespectful. And like I hear a lot of adults say like this generation is so disrespectful. Yeah. Like as well, I do think of things that this generation can work on. But um, at the same time, it's not us being rebellious. No, it's it's a finding the path mm-hmm. and also fighting for better, right? Mm-hmm. And so there is so many similarities in what folks are going through now versus what I went through at your age and things like that. And so I think it is important to to continue to find older mentors because I think the learning is so important both ways. Um, and to, to find you know elders that you can sit with and talk to and be open with and learn from, uh, those experiences are also really valuable, mm-hmm. really valuable. So you know I just think explore as much as you can in every kind of way, you know? Even if that's just sitting and listening at the feet of an elder or exploring in the mountains and finding time to, th- to hear your own thoughts, you know? Keep exploring. Thank you. Um, I just want to acknowledge you for a second and just like how much you inspire me oh, thank you. to live the life that I have. Because like when I see people like you who are in power and are working, you know, in the government, who are working in politics to help me have an easy life. Like, I don't think you understand how much I appreciate it because oh. like with you, I'm having an easier life. And, you know, you do give me that little piece of hope. Thank I'm you. Like, there is a black queer woman (laughs) as a state representative. (laughs) So every time one of these adults or gays against groomers tries to pull up with this bull crap, I'm like, "Mm, okay, go ahead. Because there's someone I know that's in power that's going to have my back at all times. At all times. And I just want to say thank you for having my back and on the behalf of the queer community, especially here in Colorado, that you're helping us to live, you know, an easier life. That is hard. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you for being my inspiration. Um, I am so obsessed with you. (laughs) So obsessed. You are amazing. And um, 
you are showing, I think, so many young people what they can be, and not just queer young people either. All young people. All young people. That's, that's all young people. Too, like my f- fight is not just for the queer community. Yeah. It is for all kids. There are plenty of kids, no matter if you're straight, gay, transgender, non-binary, whoever you are. Yeah. There are all kids who feel alone and feel like they're the only ones going through something. Yeah. And my message is like, you are loved. You are loved. I want to. I want to love those who aren't loved. Absolutely. That Absolutely. is my whole mission. I'm mm-hmm. like, there. There are all kids who feel like, oh, like there's no one there for me because I know what that feels like. Oh my God, in a few years, you're going to have your own and I think you're going to end up taking so many young <laughs> people on board and like, I I'll do. be like, dang, how many <laughs> folks you got with you today? Have whole boat. Be like, I need another one. <laughs> another yacht, please. <laughs> exactly. I'm just, wow. I love it though. I love it. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I want to inspire your kids to have you their voice. You already do. Respectfully. You already do. <laughs> no, you already do and keep okay. doing that. So, and I'll be there to help wherever I can. Thank you. I, I appreciate that so much. Um, this was quite a conversation. <laughs> Thank I've, you so much for I've, having yes, me. Absolutely. Is there anything that you'd like to share with the audience before you leave? I just not, I mean, I don't have a lot to, to share additionally, but it is just put yourself out there, you know, be seen, uh, know that you are loved, know that you are valued, know that there are people fighting for you every single day. And if you're struggling, just let folks know, tell absolutely. somebody, mm-hmm. um, somebody will be that support for you and you'll be that support for someone else. And so just keep, keep growing and keep being seen. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I've, it's been a pleasure to talk with you. Yes. I've, I, this was a great conversation. Mm-hmm. I've learned a lot. <laughs> um, I definitely like, I'm not, um, as much as I love learning about politics, I'm not always involved as I should be. And, you know, cause sometimes I turn on the TV and I'm just like, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh gosh, more wool crap. So, um, I, I definitely learned a lot more today and, I definitely want to stay a little more involved with politics just to know what's going on and to keep myself educated. And um, I just want to let y'all know that who you are doesn't stop what's possible. And I want you to remember to always be a kind human. And um, together, I just want to say bye to everybody. See you on the next one. Bye.